North Island of New Zealand lies Tongariro National Park, 2,800 feet above sea level and embracing an area of nearly 150,000 acres. Although there are many skiing grounds in New Zealand, this area is one of the most popular for tourists and New Zealanders alike. Dominating the plateau is the central volcanic mountain group, Tongariro, Ruapehu and Narohoe. Maori legend tells of a mighty battle among the mountains who dwelt on the plain in ancient times. After a bitter struggle, two of the mountains, Mount Egmont and Mount Edgecombe, departed to different parts of the North Island. Even today, so the legends say, Narohoe finds it difficult to forget his warlike past and fumes and rumbles to warn all comers that he is ready and waiting. Ski instructors from the nearby Chateau Tongariro have climbed to the top of Narahoe and walked round the crater's edge, taking a closer look at the volcanic activity. From a vantage point that is more than 7,000 feet up, the group look out over the white surrounding foothills which lead away to Tongariro. The run down the mountain slopes is fast and exhilarating and their skis knife across the fresh snow fields. Almost in Narahoe's shadow, yet set on the slopes of nearby Ruapehu, stands the Chateau Tongariro, a fine tourist hotel which provides a focal point for many who come to the mountains every year. Inside the spacious lounge, all is warm and comfortable, and it often provides a striking contrast to conditions outside. The road must be kept open and a bulldozer is brought in to help shift the drift snow. A specially designed truck with a six-wheel drive, known as the Mountain Goat, brings passengers and supplies up the mountainside. These are not only for the chateau, but also for the many alpine and ski huts which have been built above the snow line. Carefully designed to withstand the wind and cold, they are filled to overflowing with young enthusiasts who in many cases help with the building of the chalets. School's in, and the learners' slopes are covered with those who are eager to start or perhaps improve on the skills already mastered. Everywhere there's an air of excitement, coupled with a certain grim determination to succeed. For some people, getting to the instruction point seems to be the first major operation. The instructors are experts and they are keen to impart their knowledge to the many who assemble for their classes. The stance and position of skis are first essentials.
In this lesson, the snow plough movement is being demonstrated. The ability to do this marks the beginning of controlled skiing. The children, too, get the same careful tuition that the grown-ups enjoy. There are no slow learners here, and invariably it's the kiddies who win the race to be first one down the slope. Friend Horace prefers to develop his own methods. For those who feel that they are ready to try something a little more daring, the higher snowfields and slopes are ready and waiting. Chair lifts which climb a distance of 2,500 feet in three long stages move ever upwards in a continuous line. Quiet and relaxing, they bear Horace aloft and carry him on to the more exciting times ahead. The National Downhill is a course which requires a high degree of skill and fast thinking. Watch the apparent ease with which this expert negotiates the rises and turns. The movement being practiced here is the slalom, which is an Austrian technique of reverse shoulder turning. The shoulders of the skier are kept square to the direction of travel. The horror slalom involves the use of everything within sight, even reverse. The T-bar is another method used for moving skiers up the mountainside. They grasp opposite sides of the bar and standing side by side they are drawn up the slopes of the staircase. A national championship is being held on the higher slopes at Olaf's Jump and competitors fight to keep their balance during the time they are airborne. This event requires a high degree of skill and timing. Other skiers take time off to climb to the top of the mountain and see the view. For many, however, the biggest attraction is the crater lake which is warm enough to swim in. The steam clouds rising from the surface of the lake 
are an open invitation to dive in and enjoy the warmth. The snow and warm waters provide a strange contrast. A little too strange if your friends on the bank like throwing snowballs. Only the outside areas are cool enough to be pleasant, for in the centre the temperature may rise to 500 degrees centigrade. Now it's strap up and down to the lower slopes again. The big snow fields are used to full advantage by these experts. The senior instructor leads the way. The speed trials are on, and the skiers are being timed over a measured course. Highly accurate clocks time them over the distance. The clocks are started by the breaking a piece of cotton stretched across the skiway, and are automatically stopped when a second piece is broken lower down the slope at the finish of the run. Speeds of up to 80 miles an hour are reached and trialists move a considerable distance up the opposite pinnacle ridge before they're able to come to a safe halt with perhaps nothing other than a record broken. seems determined to break everything. And so evening comes to the mountains and shadows creep in across the white ski-marked snowfields which have been the setting for many a tale of adventure and excitement which will always mark the end of a day's good skiing.